Hello everybody, my name is Matt, and I guess I should say today I am probably more in my necroxis mode. Stay a while and listen. And that is because the War Within Alpha has begun for World of Warcraft. I'm not really covering anything specific about that. Instead, what I want to do is something that I used to do a lot, a lot, a lot on this channel. Almost a decade or maybe more than a decade ago. And I want to ramble on about a totally insane ass-pulled theory that I have for the War Within, Midnight, and the Final Titan story. And this will contain very, 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 very minor spoilers for what we've seen from the War Within um, uh, Alpha, the internal alpha that just started today. Um, but overall, there's really not any big spoilers or anything, so I'm not going to be talking about any of that stuff. Instead, I want to focus on maybe having figured out the plot of the trilogy. <laughs> Look, I don't actually think this probably is going to be exactly what happens, but... I saw a single piece of line of dialogue, well, I guess a dialogue box from a character from the alpha, and I was like, wait, if that means that, then this means this, then this means this, and this means this, and oh my god. So, <laughs> if you're following me on Twitter, I already said this, but I want to put out a video just because in case I happen to be right, I want to gloat, because I'm petty, and I want to be a, I want to be a petty bitch. <laughs> so, what, where do we, where do we start with this? So, on the war within Eternal Alpha, people have been going and picking through all the little things you can do. There's a big event that happens at the beginning of the expansion that we're not going to get into, and there's a bunch of characters all over the place. Um, eventually, as you get through the introduction event, you see various characters in various other different places, and we eventually can talk to Jaina. And Jaina has a line of dialogue, not about the plot that's going on in the war within. Um, she is referring to something that has already happened in the story, but is providing more context. So... A theme, if you play Dragonflight, or at least the end of Dragonflight, or you know anything about going into the World Soul Saga trilogy, there is this idea, this thing called the Radiant Song. If you've played Final Fantasy XIV, it probably sounds very familiar to the Echo and how Hydaelyn speaks through people and tell, tries to warn them of things. The Radiant Song is a message, a song, a sound, a feeling, something that Azeroth, the World Soul is sending out to people across the planet and certain people are hearing and they're taking it as a warning sign. Anduin hears it, Thrall hears it, Jaina hears it, Illyria hears it, Moira hears it, Magni hears it. It's a big narrative, uh, it's not really a ticking clock, but it's kind of like a push. It's like an inciting incident almost without it being an incident itself, if you are familiar with storytelling tropes. Jaina hears this Radiant Song. Now we're going to connect that to a thing that Jaina says, a piece of off dialogue that you don't have to hear her talk about. You can just talk to her and ask her a question and she will say this to you. She is talking about the planet of Koresh. Koresh was the home world of the Ethereals. And if you've played World of Warcraft for a long time, you might remember in Burning Crusade, in Netherstorm, um, in the Mana Forges in Netherstorm, this plotline becomes kind of like a major subplot of the zone. Because Koresh, the homeworld of the Ethereals, and we don't know how long ago this happened, we have just been told, quote, it's many thousands of years ago, that Koresh was consumed by the Void, specifically a Void Lord, at the time the actual Void Lords, as in like the most powerful Void creatures, they weren't a thing in the plot yet, and Void Lord was just a title. But I don't know how they're going to handle that. I don't know what they're going to do with that, like, conflicting information about the titles going through Midnight. But either way, I'm just going to use what the game in Burning Crusade said. Koresh was consumed by the Void Lord named Demensius. And if you played Burning Crusade, you might remember this guy being at the end of one of the quest lines for one of the Mana Forges where Demensius comes to Outland, and you fight and you kill him. Demensius consumed the world of the Ethereals. It is why the Ethereals look the way they do. 
they have been consumed by arcane energy and basically have lost their flesh and they're just kind of like arcane beings which is why they wrap themselves in the wrappings that they do now what does this have to do with Jaina? so <laughs> there is another character that was introduced in legion in the final patch named locust walker Locust Walker is an ethereal that teaches Illyria Windrunner, who becomes a major character at the end of Legion and is going to be a major character in The War Within, teaches her how to control the Void. And presumably he's going to come back again in War Within and in uh, Midnight, but we don't see him yet and this is not the person that is actually talking, it's Jaina. And I'm just going to read verbatim when I put this screenshot up what Jaina says. Jaina says, Locust Walker told us that the people of his homeworld, Koresh, received a vision not unlike the Radiant Song, and then Koresh fell to shadow. By the time the Ethereals realized their world was warning them the coming of danger, it was already too late. We cannot allow the same thing to happen on Azeroth. So I saw this, and I was like... <sighs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I know what the plot of the World Soul Saga is going to be. Koresh had a Radiant Song. Koresh, therefore, had a World Soul. What have the Void Lords been doing? And this is something that Metzen wrote in Chronicle, and Metzen is back now controlling the plot. I don't think it's a stretch to say this is what's going on. What have the Void Lords been trying to do this entire time? They have been stuck in a different reality, trying to get into ours so they can get to Azeroth and corrupt its world soul. And a Void Corrupted World Soul, a Void Titan, is such a dangerous, incredible threat that even somebody like Sargeras, before he turned evil, was so afraid of this happening rather than trying to work with his brothers and sisters in the Pantheon to stop this, what does he do? He heel turns, becomes evil, and creates the Burning Legion, one of the strongest infinite armies of the whole Warcraft franchise, because he's afraid of a Void Titan. Koresh had a world soul. Koresh fell to the Void, specifically Dementius, the Void Lord. We know... That our girl Zalatath, who's coming back and seems to be the villain of the first two-thirds of the story, if not the whole thing, she is called the Harbinger of the Void. And we know that back last year, late last year, it was either October or November, I, don't, I should probably have had that written down, but that's one of the things I forgot to do. Um, there was a uh, reward from the trading post that you could get called Void Song, Staff of the Harbinger. I'll put a picture of it right here. If you look at the flavor text, it says, A gift of Dementius bestowed at the height of the Black Empire. Those touched by shadow are drawn to its haunting whispers. It looks very similar to the Black Blade of the Empire, does it not? Okay, so you have this staff now. And what do you do? If you go to Silithus with this staff, there's a new NPC there, and he will tell you things based on which which item from the trading post you have. If you have the staff, here is what he says. You ask him, do you recognize my staff? He says, do you have any idea how ancient that weapon you wield is? There was a time when this whole world was ruled by the Black Empire. It was beautiful. The masters bestowed gifts upon their faithful that stave was one such instrument. It was given to the Harbinger so that one day she might, she might, what? No, I was not going to tell them. I, I, and then he cuts off. Dementius, the void creature that consumed the world soul of Koresh, gave the void song staff to Zalatath, who was the Harbinger. This confirms Zalatath is the Harbinger of Dementius. So, Let's get back to the main theory. Koresh was a titan that fell to the void, specifically Dementius. What do we know what Zalatath and Ajara are doing in the War Within? They are trying to build up their forces. Zalatath goes to the Nerubians. She seems to be messing around with them and doing a bunch of crazy shenanigans, trying to get the Nerubian Empire and their queen to come out from underneath the planet and to do her bidding. So, what happens in Midnight, the next expansion? Midnight 
takes place around the areas of the Sunwell, Quel'Thalas, and all the surrounding areas. Zalatath is the harbinger for something bigger. We now know that bigger thing is Dementius. She wants the Sunwell for something. Do you guys remember what the Sunwell repeatedly, twice, no, three times now? Almost three, but for sure twice, what the Sunwell can be used for? The War of the Ancients and the Third War. The Sunwell can open portals to other planets. So, <laughs> here's my thoughts about what's going to happen in the War Within and Midnight leading into the Final Titan. I don't have any predictions for the Final Titan because it's still so far off that there's really not much teasing of it in, but I'm fairly confident I know what's going to happen up until then. We have Zalatath and Ajara trying to build an army to go break out from underneath the planet to attack Quel'Thalas and the Sunwell to get control of Quel'Thalas to then corrupt it to the Void. We are told in Midnight that the Sunwell and the surrounding area are attacked by the Void. That seemingly is what happens in the War Within. Zalatath, even if we stop the Nerubians in mass, she gets enough powers with the Void, probably tied with Ajara, who hasn't shown up yet in the War Within, but we do know as of the end of Dragonflight, is active. Ajara is active, still has some Naga with her, and is allied with Zalatath. Whether or not it's an alliance of convenience or genuine allies, we do know Ajara and, a and a Zalatath are working together, and presumably, based on a piece of text dialogue we see in the Forbidden Reach, are also allied with Eridicron, but they are using Eridicron to their own ends. We don't know what Eridicron really wants to do besides kill the Titans, but based on a piece of... Uh, like gray text fluff dialogue you can get on an item. It seems that Zalatath and Ajara are using him as like a puppet to do whatever they want. So Zalatath and Ajara are going to build, build a large enough army to attack and invade Quoth and the Sunwell, transforming it into a void well to open the way to Koresh, which even though it is corrupted and fallen to the void, it is not destroyed because we know in the Burning Crusade, there are NPCs who talk about having freshly arrived there in the Blades Edge Mountains, where this quest line happens, from Koresh, implying that Koresh is not gone. So, my thoughts are, I will again read this again because I got interrupted. Zalatath and Ajara are trying to build a large enough army to attack and invade Quoth'alas and the Sunwell to transform it into a Voidwell and open the way to Koresh and get Koresh to come to Azeroth and infect the world soul here. Koresh potentially could even be used as a proxy of the Void Lords, who want to break the barrier of reality so they can come to ours. This is exactly what Sargeras does with Argus in the Legion plotline. Zalatath succeeds in some way, but she dies by the end of Midnight, because I don't think she's going to survive the trilogy. That's just my own personal theory. Um, the Void starts to corrupt, or does corrupt, Azeroth, which leads us to the Final Titan, which is described as basically an end times scenario for Azeroth, where all the shit hits the fan in the worst potential possible way. The Titans come back, we go to Ulduar to meet them, and then shit goes down. I don't know what's going to go what's going to go down there. My personal theory is most of the Titans are going to come back, and they're going to be like, "Well, our mission failed." Time to just destroy Azeroth rather than let it fall to the void. Maybe Anar or another one of them will say that's stupid, but I think we're going to be fighting against the Titans and the Void Lords to save the planet. The Void Lords want to corrupt the planet, the Titans want to destroy it because they're afraid, and we have to stop both of them and save the planet. That's how I think it's probably going to end. But I just wanted to throw this theory out there because there's too many little connecting things that make sense. And um, yeah, as you can see, for the first time in I don't know how many years, this actually has me kind of like excited for a plotline because it's A, it feels like Warcraft, B, involves a bunch of characters that I really like, C, makes sense, and D, is kind of a good story, I think. So, that's it. This is just my rambly thoughts. I did have a bit of like a script, but this was mostly off the cuff. Hopefully it made sense. I'm gonna, I'm trying, hopefully in the editing, to show you all the little pieces of evidence I'm talking about, but yeah. What do you guys think? So... Thanks for watching. That's all I wanted to say. Just wanted to barf out a little bit of a lore thing for you. And uh, yeah, reactions if you're curious to Hell of a Boss are coming back soon. If you're wondering why I took a week break is because last week, at, on like, 
like last Tuesday. I don't even know how this happened. I really, really, I think I like bruised and almost broke my tailbone, which makes sitting down very hard. So I didn't want to react to a bunch of stuff and just be in pain the whole time. But now I'm mostly recovered. So here we go. <laughs> so I really want to finish Hell of a Boss all the way up to the current episodes before the new stuff comes out, which I keep seeing. I don't know if it's confirmed because I don't want to look too much into it and get spoiled or heavily implied to the, the latter half of season two is going to start again by the end of April is what I believe I've seen. So either way, thanks for watching everyone. Stay awesome. I'll see you soon and farewell.